Afternoon, everybody. Tonight, very shortly, um, I'm going to go and pick my dad up. We're going to be heading through to Weirdale, a town, a village even, called Rukorp. There's an image that I've had in my head and I've wanted to get for some time. Um, like all images, I think, or most images, you should plan as much as you can. And you're going to get a much better outcome if you're planning your images. This image tonight of the mine shaft at Rukorp. I've checked the weather. It's beautiful blue skies at the moment. It's going to be clear all night. The Milky Way I've checked on a free star app, which uh, lines up perfectly behind the mine shaft. Around about half past eight, nine o'clock, um, we should start to see that line up. Um, again, free apps, you can download them. Uh, always great for the check. I've also planned uh, the route. I know where I'm going to, I know where I can park. I know how long it's going to take to the mine shaft, which isn't very long. Um, you've got to plan in in those de in, in that kind of detail if you want to get a good image and a good outcome. Put some effort into your images. Yeah, some images, impromptu images, are going to be brilliant and they're going to work. However, I think when you plan your images, you know where you're going. You know when the Milky Way is coming, you're going to do. Um, you're going to do well with your photos, but yeah, certainly plan on the mix. You feel a bit more confident in what you're doing. So, kit that I'm, that I'm taking, the Fuji X-T3, I'm taking the Samyang 12mm, uh, 2.8 lens for the astrophotography, which will be great. I'm going to take the 55-200 to 200 Fuji as well, just for uh, maybe some close-up of the mineshaft with the Milky Way core behind it. Uh, I'm not too sure if that'll work yet, but it's worth a try. So, the image that I've got in my head, I know almost to the letter, how it's going to pan out all right and i would encourage you to do the same with any of you for uh sorry your photographs is plan them as much as you can uh and take it from there so i'll update later guys cheers bye settings just because it depends on your situation that you're in but I'm using the Fuji X-T3 and it's on manual control with the Samyang 12mm lens uh, f2.8 with variable ISO depending on what the Milky Way is going to look like at the moment it's 1600 but I think that'll probably be a little bit higher uh, I've got a 10 second uh, shutter delay on just for any camera shake and the intervalometer is set for to um, take as many shots as I need without touching the camera um, so yeah, the skies are looking beautiful. I'll show you the pictures later of Ruko and the Milky Way and uh, some footage that we've got as well. But yeah, he me down at the minute and uh, it's looking like a pretty cool night. from the, uh, the images uh, just a few seconds ago that uh, the the mine has the well, not the center of the Milky Way but the as much of the center of the Milky Way as that we can see from the northern hemisphere at this time of the year behind the mine now I've had a fair few questions about the picture which is excellent um, I've had questions about these videos again which is brilliant it shows that you're kind of engaging with them and whatnot and you're liking what you see uh, so yeah a couple of the main questions were um, is the Milky Way that pronounced to the naked eye? And the answer to that is yes and no. If you haven't seen the Milky Way before, it's it'll blow your mind, kind of the, the amount of stars that you can see uh, just with your naked eye. 
if it is a particularly dark site that you're at, like the ones that we're close to near Kielder, uh, Holy Island, and through Weardale, then you can, when you let your eyes adjust to the darkness for half an hour, 45 minutes or so, you'll start to see and distinguish the dust bands of the galaxy. Uh, not as much as the camera picks out, obviously, but you can still see uh, a vast majority more stars than you can see in your towns or whatnot. It's somet sometimes it's even hard to distinguish the um, lost me train of thought. The normal constellations uh, that you'd normally see in the night sky, just simply because there's that many stars. Okay, so the answer is yes and no. You can see. The Milky Way with your naked eye stretching from one horizon over to the next uh, and it is mind-blowingly beautiful and no you can't see a lot of the detail what's brought out just on the camera um, you can see some of it but not not a lot okay but definitely a million percent it's worth going to see if you can if you've got any questions about the Milky Way and how to photograph it how to see it where to go Leave a comment and I'll get straight back to you. Uh, I don't mind that at all. And if anybody, we're living a brilliant part of the world up here in the northeast. We've got dark sky sites right on the doorstep, so you know it's it's really accessible. Uh, second was how did I expose the mine and the foreground uh, to that level? Before I went, uh, I had in my head what image I wanted and how I wanted to achieve it. Now. We left uh, South Shields and we arrived at uh, Rookhope, uh, Weardale, uh, a few minutes after sunset. And I used that ambient light from the sunset, um, probably 20 minutes or so after sunset, to light the foreground of the image. What I didn't want was to have to go there and have to illuminate the mine uh, with artificial light, like a torch or, or something like that. I think. No disrespect to anybody who uses this technique, but I think the images the, the, the look bad. I think I think light paint an object uh, in darkness. I think doesn't give the right effect. Um, so I was prefer I'm starting to prefer kind of going getting the foreground image while there's a little bit of ambient light, uh, natural light, and then taking the picture of the galaxy or whatever it is that you're photographing. So the image that you've just seen is. Um, a blend of two images. Now, <clears throat> the foreground was taken, like I said, just after sunset, uh, but then you could start to see the Milky Way kind of going behind it. And the Milky Way was taken probably around a half an hour after the main, uh, that, that main foreground image. And people will say, well, that isn't a true image. It is, because it's exactly what you see kind of if, if you were to go there and take your own picture. It's just I've chosen to illuminate the foreground uh, in a natural way rather than an artificial way. Um, I did take other images where I've done a long exposure of the mine and the galaxy at the same time and it worked well, it worked all right, but um, I prefer the other one, what I've done, the uh, the natural lighting uh, of, of the mine shaft. Um, and I think that's probably the way that I'm going to go with my photography is plan them a little bit more uh, thorough in terms of what natural light I can use if I'm at a dark sky, uh, if I'm taking dark sky pictures. Um, I think, you know, it reduces the noise of the image, it gives more clarity of the image, more, um, more detail. Whereas if you're doing a long exposure to bring out detail of a darkened object, then you're going to end up with a quite a grainy image, quite a, you're going to have to draw out lots of detail and post-processing, which I'd, I want to get away from. I want clearer images, not ones that look like they've been uh, drawn to death through Photoshop and Lightroom and whatnot. So that's how I've done that image. The night went brilliantly well. It was great. It was lovely for it to just go out. I haven't been out for a long time now to photograph the Milky Way. Um, location was stunningly beautiful. I'm dying to go back there. Uh, there's loads more places to explore. It's like an abandoned uh, little village. Um, great to spend time with my dad. Um, there was a couple of other photographers there, but they were offered uh, um, at some of the abandoned cottages. Yeah, it was it was great for it to get out. I can't wait for it to go back out. I've got a few more uh, night sky images in mind. Um, so a quick final run through the settings. Use the Fuji X-T3. 
generally you use the 12 mil Samyang, what I've got for the Fuji, uh, at around f2 point odd, something like that, to let to let a, as much light in as possible. ISO was a, a lot higher this time, probably, I think from memory it was four, sometimes 6,000, just to bring out a lot of detail of the Milky Way so I could kind of use it in post-processing. Uh, shutter speed was between 20 and 30 seconds and um, using a, a delayed timer uh, to prevent camera shake and whatnot. Um, yeah, fab. Great, loved it. Can't wait for it to go back out. I hope you've enjoyed the video. I'm starting to get a little bit better at these, I think. Uh, I think. Leave a comment, please. Uh, if you've got any questions or if you just want to comment on the video, uh, it's always, always welcome. Hit subscribe and hit the bell button, please. Uh, all yous, you subscribers, um, I'm really chuffed with. I'm really happy that I'm drawing your attention. And I hope to provide more uh, videos like this in future for you. So uh, take care, guys, and I'll speak to you shortly. Bye-bye.